I was born crazy about ants. Might have been the treasure hunt. Who's under that rock? Who's in these acorns? What are they doing there? Ants were everywhere, but like a shimmering sea of colored dots, when you get closer, it's a crowd of people. All you have to do is plant your face into the soil to see that if you've seen one ant, you haven't seen them all. <laughs> Out of this seething mass, we've managed to describe 10,000 species and thousands more await description. And it turns out this group living has served them really well because now there are so many ants, <laughs> about 10,000 trillion actually, and the weight of all of them together equals the weight of all mankind. Looking at it another way, in most environments, all the terrestrial animals, if you were to mash them together, ants would make up about 10% of that biomass. We have exploding ants. We have ants with heads shaped like plugs to block their nest holes. This is one of my favorite. It's a trap jaw ant. Its mandibles open to 180 degrees, and then they snap shut reflexively, very fast motion. Sometimes they will hit something hard without meaning to, and it will cause them to fly into the air. We also have giant ants. This one is carrying home a baby mouse. Now, sadly, I know, I know, we don't have anything like that around here. But I'm thrilled that we're admiring it together. And that brings us to what I love most about them, and that's sharing them with you. And now that I collect ants professionally, sharing them is not only a passion, it's also a tool. Because I'm not always sure whose rock I'm looking under. And when I'm out there, I have to, you know, not just find ants, but also not get shot. <laughs> so remote places is where you find remote people, but it's also where you get a lot of the best ants. So as you go down the road less traveled, sometimes not maintained at all, or at least not for uh, pacenic use, where the bathrooms look a lot like this, if there's one lesson that I've learned, it's look insane, be kind, talk science. <laughs> OK, so here's an example. I was on the trail of this elusive nighttime ant. Only problem was, I couldn't find any. The book said they lived in oak trees, but evidently they read the book before I did, and they moved someplace else so that I couldn't bother them. I was driving dejectedly up a mountain road one day and came across this general store, met this really nice couple who ran, and I told them what I was doing. And they said, you can stay here, look for ants. Use our idyllic ranch as a home base. <laughs> Sounds great, but when I came there a few days later, all I found was these very drunk, very lonely gentlemen. And the very first thing they asked when I got out of the car was, are you gay? <laughs> well, as we exchanged sort of fake smiles and I wondered what to do, I thanked my stars that I was covered in a week's worth of grime, that my hair was standing on end from dirt, and that I looked perhaps a little bit unstable. <laughs> Once they saw that I wasn't going to be an easy target, we became friends. We knocked back a few beers. That guy's wearing my jacket, actually. And uh, <laughs> they helped me find my first dance. These were the first dance of the trip. Found him at night. Black mirrored finish, finish. These mini Batmobiles were climbing up the oak trees into the canopy, where they were tending herds of insects. Some insects drink plant sap, and they give off concentrated sugar as waste. Ants maintain vast herds of these, and they will defend them vigorously against photographers. <laughs> so. I have to ask complete strangers for help when I go on these trips. And the extent to which they've helped me has renewed my faith in humanity again and again. Perhaps one time that deserves special mention is in Ensenada, Mexico. I didn't know a soul, but I heard about a research institution and went there and knocked on doors. Before long, I met these gents in the middle, conservation biologists with a passion for insects. Not only did they take me out into the field, but they called a TV crew to come out and film us and showcase scientists working with one another toward the common goal of knowledge. And I was shocked, but actually it didn't stop there. They also gave me a government truck, equipment, <laughs> assistance in the field, and lifelong friends with whom I still keep in touch today. <laughs> so I'll blab about ants at anyone. Oh well, you know, a better educated public means a better world. But sometimes it can also get you out of a jam, you see. Anytime you're looking for ants, you'll look suspicious. <laughs> it's not clear whose land you're on, and it's never clear what you're doing. You just look weird. <clears throat> sometimes you need a good explanation. 
One time, I was stopped in the field by an officer, and I was out. He asked me what I was doing. I had an ax in my hand, wearing camo. He had several questions. <laughs> he said, why are you wearing camo? Why is that ax in your hand? Why are your hands red? I explained to him I was skinning the spines off a prickly pear. And that's how it had happened. And he paused for a second and then said, oh. Well, the best way to skin a prickly pear, so you stick a stick through the middle like that, then you skin off the spines, gave me a couple other tips, and then he let me go. Sometimes, folks, you just blab at how nerdy you're being to them, and they'll say, OK, OK, just shut up, just go. And sometimes you're really lucky, as what happened to me in this exclusive place, Condor Camp, where I met these lovely people whose job it was reintroducing the critically endangered condor to the wild. They gave me shelter on a cold, snowy night, and said if I would help them with condors, they would help me find ants. So I got to learn a lot about these birds. It was a magnificent trade. And they helped me find the southernmost record of those same ants, the Batmobile ants. Of course, field work isn't all great. These are some helpless pictures of my car getting swallowed by a flood from Hurricane Ike. Sometimes I meet dangerous animals or people, and sometimes it gets lonely, you know, when there are no ants to be found. The great historian Howard Zinn once said, small acts multiplied by millions of people can change the world. And that's certainly true of 10,000 trillion ants. They move mountains, they start forests, but like this chain of living ants that army ants make to cross a chasm, ants have also been a bridge for me. And they have allowed me to form friendships and connect with folks that I would have otherwise had no just reason to do so. And I thank them for that, and I thank you. Thanks very much.